let's explore the specifics of how to engage in brief conversations for learning after a crisis or clinical debriefing. During this discussion, we will highlight important moments within the last scene of our crisis scenario. Before we start, it is important to differentiate diffusing from debriefing. After any stressful event, there is an element of diffusing that people need to let off steam or vent about what happened. This is very different from a structured conversation that is designed for learning as a team what went well and what could have gone better. In a debrief that occurs immediately after an event, there is often a higher ratio of diffusing to debriefing than what may occur after participants have had more time to cool off. For this unit, we will be looking at a hot debrief or one that occurs during or immediately after an event. Watch this clip and notice how Daniel takes an informal discussion of the events and converts that energy into a formal debriefing. While you watch, notice what Daniel says or does that might contribute to participants feeling safe to start debriefing. Hey, how'd it go? We think the patient had anaphylaxis. We had to give Epi. Wow, from the blood? No, we think he was stung by a bee and that's why he fell. Remember the hand? Yeah, Teresa called it when she saw the tongue. Totally good catch. Hey, uh, why don't we have a quick debrief about the case? Can everybody take a minute before we go back to the unit? Sure. All right, I will set the timer for five minutes. It would be great to have anesthesia and surgery here too for this. Sure, but let's review together now. Uh, we can schedule a larger debrief at the interdisciplinary discussion later this month. This is a good case to review with a larger team. All right, if it's good with everybody as the documenter, I'll facilitate. And I'll just start by saying, if anybody needs to cool off or take a minute outside, you can do so at this time. That's great. And remember, we have formal resources for any staff in need of more support after challenging clinical events. All right, as Dr. Boyd mentioned, we'll be formally discussing the details of the case later in the month. So let's just use this time now to compare our mental model, review what we did well as a team, and if the same patient comes in again in five minutes, is there anything we might do differently? Can we start with initial reactions or any feelings we want to get off our chests? During this short scene, we saw Daniel display a few behaviors to help establish the rules of engagement and contribute to creating a safe space for this conversation. He sets expectations about the time this will take, in this case, five minutes. He seeks permission to proceed in facilitating, saying, can everyone take a minute? And looks for nods of affirmation. He acknowledges Ernan's desire for more inclusivity and that this is just a quick review as a team and that there will be a more formal cold debrief later on. And finally, he allows for more diffusing of reactions and offers space for people to leave if needed. Plus, he gives a reminder that formal resources exist for anybody experiencing more personal traumatic reactions to the event. Now view this next scene where Daniel is mostly listening and encouraging all team members to contribute. He does so through short prompts for the team to consider what went well and what could have been done differently. This technique is often referred to as plus delta. Plus meaning what was positive about our performance, and delta, referring to what would we change if given the chance to do it again. What else did we do well as a team? I felt really supported by Dr. Boyd. I wasn't entirely confident with that airway. I'm glad we were able to get anesthesia there to help, and you made me feel comfortable saying that. And I think we did what was best for the patient. Well, I really appreciated you being honest about your comfort level. And you went with the plan to give Epi upstairs. As leader, you really listen to the team. What do we think we could have done better? Was there any systems issues that maybe we don't want to forget to pass on from today? Well, it would have been nice if the trauma room was restocked last night, or at least if we had been given a heads up about it. Yeah, good point. I will pass that on to nurse management. Also, I'm glad that trauma came to do the fast because we really needed another doctor in the room. Um, I'm stressed that the rest of the ED got shut down because we were working on this. Sometimes, during a hot debrief, it can be hard to separate the emotional reaction from a practical discussion of what could have been done better. Watch this clip and consider what emotions are Diane and Ernan experiencing currently. How does Daniel, as the facilitator, take this interaction and coax it towards a learning conversation? I'm frustrated we didn't treat for anaphylaxis sooner. 
I knew that the patient's hand had something to do with this. Well, we followed our algorithms and got the patient to OR where he belonged, so I think we did a good job. Diane, tell us more about how you felt. What do you think contributed to your not feeling hurt about the patient's hand? I mean, I guess I didn't know it was anaphylaxis or anything, but I kept saying, look at the hand, and I felt ignored. I wish I had pushed it a little bit more. Maybe if I had said it differently somehow? Actually, I could tell that you were concerned, Diane, and there's nothing you could have said that would have pulled my attention. I was just fixed on hypertension being secondary to blood loss. I honestly didn't consider anaphylaxis. Well, it's a good thing we cleaned out the trauma slot this morning. Otherwise, it would have really been a mess. In this clip, Daniel was listening closely to Diane and interpreted her frustration as feeling unheard in the situation. By reflecting back what he heard and asking an open-ended question, Daniel was able to reveal more behind Diane's frame of mind. And Diane was able to reflect that she could have spoken up more. Daniel also ensures opportunities for participation from all members, and Dr. Boyd reflects that maybe she was fixated on hypotension and not considering anaphylaxis. Sometimes team members are very quick to find opportunities for improvement, but it is just as important to spend time reinforcing what went well and build resilience. In this final clip, I want you to focus on how the team discusses some of the positive things and how Daniel ends with a statement of gratitude for the work they did. Gratitude in self-reflection is a known positive psychology strategy that can increase individual and team sense of purpose and joy from their work. Dr. Boyd, as a team leader, was there anything you thought could have run more smoothly? Not really. I really appreciated everyone's contribution to the plan. There were some hairy moments, <laughs> some things that didn't fit. I'm still reeling that I missed anaphylaxis. But your orders were very clear. We always knew exactly what you were talking about. And we got the patient upstairs really quickly. Oh. All right, that's it. Hey, everybody, before we uh, get back to the unit, let's just take a minute. Let's recognize how amazing our work is. Because we worked as a team together, we got to save a life today. <laughs> right? Back to work. Now, let's review some of the tenets of a hot clinical debrief. Set expectations at the beginning seek permission to proceed, and grant permission to leave, allow time and space for diffusing, employ a plus-delta approach with a focus on systems, not individuals, encourage participation from all voices in the room, and end on a good note to promote positive psychology through gratitude. Reflection is a part of the continuous cycle of improvement for individuals, teams, and systems. As a final review in this section, we discussed curiosity as a skill that must be practiced, the importance of both sharing and listening in team reflections, and some basics of how to facilitate a team reflection immediately after an event. We hope that you take these lessons and continue to exercise your muscle of self-reflection to improve your own performance in a crisis.